I am a temple who walks the earth. My womb is fertile for giving birth. I am a woman planted in truth. I grow my branches from sacred roots. You are the form of who you wanna be. So come untether, your soul is free. We're here to heal, we're here to thrive. We are a dream who's come alive. We light a candle, our hearts awake. Illumination for God's sake, a revelation for God's sake. An evolution for God's sake, an inspiration for God's sake, 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 for God's sake. And so it is. Hello, Essence. This is Jody England, and you're listening to Wild Soul Medicine Radio. <laughs> so here we are. After, uh, if you were with us last week, we attempted to have this conversation with Viv and I, this public conversation of our intimate behind the scenes look last week. And as we went to um, to come on the air, there was a series of technological snafus that prevented it. And of course, it was all in alignment with us really needing to go inward and take a break. And so we honored that and um, just did a five minute show last week. And we're back this week with the conversation that we promised last week. And, um, you know, I just before I bring Viv on, I really kind of just wanted to frame what has been alive and moving through me these last few weeks. And uh, what has what brought me to this idea of having this conversation with Viv? And, you know, ever since the show I did on healing our mother wounds, I've been deep in this exploration of um, just how surprisingly pervasive that was in my own life. You know, f- with having a mother who I largely had a good relationship with my whole life, I, I've been astounded by how this connection is really under everything. And not only, I mean, it, I guess it is all a wound. And also the more I heal it, the more I see that it's, um, you know, that even outside of the wound, there's this sense of like individuation and separation and growing ourselves up is really as much what, what this is all about as anything. And so I've been deeply navigating that space and have been receiving healings from Viv and from other practitioners and uh, went into a a vision quest of sorts by myself last week, which was the first time I've ever done something like that by myself for an extended period. And uh, it was amazing. And, And, you know, so as I felt into what I wanted to talk to you about this week, it's like, it's so personal and it's so much about going in and um, you know, I've been so in resistance to going in. And so the advice I would have for you is, yeah, go in, go in, see what's there, be with yourself, do your thing. And I also know that nothing could get me in before I actually went in. And so, you know, I was in this conundrum of like, how do I communicate what this experience is? How do I entice you to um, drop all of the external ties, all of the pull to be out, to be in your relationships, to be doing your stuff, to be striving and getting and conquering and accomplishing. How do I, um, how do I allow you to hear your own voice, to shift that which is in the way, which has you being connected horizontally out to all of these people, places, and things in your constructed reality? Versus being vertical, right? Vertical as in you're in yourself and vertical as in you're connected to source. And and so what occurred to me is that, you know, you understanding an experience of, um, of how that occurs around here would be really useful because um, this is not a behind the scenes look at how we conduct our business, although it is 
partly that because, you know, one thing is everything. But ultimately, I wanted you to have a glimpse into what it's like to be us, you know, to walk this path, to operationalize it, to move it out of some compartmentalized, like we go over here and we we do this thing, we do our personal work or we have a coaching session and then we go over here and we do our business a whole separate way. And then we, you know, go into our families and do something completely different from that. But really what, what Viv and I are endeavoring to do is to be our whole selves in all of the places, in all of the ways, at all of the times. And, um, and it's not always pretty. It's, it's usually not actually, it's usually not pretty. And, you know, I, I have this affinity for undoneness, for breaking the old paradigm a concept, you know, that um, that there ever is some finish line. And I, you know, I'm subscribed to many lists. And as I see these emails come in with people, um, you know, still really largely furthering their brand based upon here's this glossy image of me with my perfect table and my perfect couch and all of my um, things in place and my perfect outfit and makeup and my life is just like this you know instead of giving you the truth about um, what are the breakdowns looking like and where do you think that you don't have it and um, and what's real about all of that perfection anyway you know it's not like um, it's not like that is actually the commodity that we ought to be striving for because it's, it's illusion, you know, and it's painful because it's this brief moment. It's one click of a camera where that is the case. And outside of that, it's, um, you know, it's a whole lot of striving for something that isn't true anyway. So, um, so, you know, what happens behind the scenes here is we have these beautiful interactions and clearings and healings and, um, depth filled excursions into understanding our soul. And it's very real. It's very real. And that's what my intention is today is for you to um, feel and see and know what it can look like to live a life where you don't have to pretend. You don't have to be anything you're not. You don't have to be more done than you are. Um, and that's actually, Viv and I were talking about that before. Because I have to convince her to come on. This is not her strong suit. Is <laughs> coming out and talking about behind the scenes. She's very much a um, a support person, and she's very happy being behind the scenes. So this is a big stretch for her. And um, I said, you know, it's really the exercise for us is in laying down our egos and just showing up as we are, without feeling like we have to perform or say, like, you know, this is what I learned, and you should just learn this, and then you'll be awesome like me. But um, but instead, like really feeling each of us walking side by side on this path, doing the best we can and um, and sharing our wisdom as we go. So with that, I welcome my beautiful soul sister, uh, cheerleader, supporter, lover extraordinaire, Viv Gerard. Hi, beauty. <laughs> awesome is here. <laughs> I laugh when you said that. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Oh my gosh. It's so fun to play with you in this space. I'm always playing with her in this space, but usually she's behind the scenes chatting with me and you all can't see her. So now you get to hear her beautiful voice. <laughs> Too funny. Mm -hmm. So Beauty, is there anything that you want to share as we just begin this conversation? Anything about where you are or what's up for you as we begin? Hmm. I don't know. I don't think there's anything specific. You know, what we were talking about yesterday was um, how this is sort of a, like I'm in an in-between place right now. You know, I've been barreling along and now summer's next week and I'm about to slow my schedule down a little bit. And so there's just been this um, like anticipation, like something's coming, but not quite sure what it is. And, you know, it feels undone, which is why I wanted to wait till next week. <laughs> 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 right. Get a hand on one trapeze at least. <laughs> I'm like, let me be done and then we'll talk. What is this undone part? Yes. But yeah, it's good. I mean, there's so there's so much happening in the business and in life and with the kids and you know, it's just fast and full and so good. Um Yeah, I mean, it is so good right now. Mm. Yeah, I love that. And I think, you know, 
Uh, Viv and I are always expanding our ability to be with the undoneness, right? So again, we don't present the undoneness to you because we are done with it. You see, it's a Zen cone always. Literally, like there's, we're constantly looking for, um, you know, we, of course, our egos want there to be some landing place. We want to find some place where it's like, okay, I'm through that, you know, and, and we have moments of that, you know, where we finally get an aha and we bask in the glow <laughs> of that. <laughs> and then, you know, like somewhere on the heels of it, maybe a minute later, maybe a couple of days later, maybe a week. I don't know if we ever really give ourselves a week. Um, you know, the, the, the next thing is up and, and we don't do it here's what I love about us. We, I don't think we do it from a place of striving, like, you know, let's get the next thing. I definitely did that early on, you yeah, know, where too. I was yeah, looking for like, okay, what else can I conquer and what else needs cleared so I can be fixed? And now it feels much more like it just arises, you know, like I just get up in the morning in beingness and then, you know, I'm either happy or I'm not happy or, or I'm clear or I'm not clear. And then I just kind of begin being with and seeing, does this need tended or can it move on its own? And if it needs tended, where and how will I do that? And um, so I don't know. Is that what you experienced too, Viv? Yeah. And I think what I like is, you know, when we first started working together, there was that feeling of uh, catching up or mm -hmm. you've done this, I should do this. Or are you doing this? I'll do it the other way. You know, um, competition, but not in an ugly way, just in a healthy way of growing and stretching. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting now because it feels so much more like uh, when you need help to be held, mm -hmm. I'm usually able and ready. Mm -hmm. you know? When I'm falling apart, you're ready. So it's just this really, it's uh, the flow is much better. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's actually one of the things I wanted to talk about first is uh, the beauty of creating a situation where you have someone in the same depth of conversation that you're in and mm -hmm you can really do this for each other, you know? And it's, uh, I would say, you know, it's rare in a way, and also it's definitely something to aspire to. I highly recommend you putting it on your vision board and making that a big piece of what you're excavating for yourself is your ability to allow support and partnership and sisterhood like that to show up for you. And then, you know, in a way it's like, it's a lot like a marriage, you know? Um, in that there's this deep commitment to be in relationship and to be spiritual teachers for one another. And then so much space to grow and evolve. And, you know, again, just like a marriage, like it hasn't always been that way either, but it's one of the things I'm enjoying so much now about our relationship maturing is this ability for us to mutually hold each other. And, you know, we've been at this for a couple of years now. And so it's, it's now like um, the other day, Viv actually came and found me, you know? So I, I had been, um, I think it was maybe the second week after doing the mother wound show. And, and so Viv had done a beautiful clearing for me the first week around that. And, and it, was, it, it was beautiful. And as energy work goes, there's layers. So there's a beautiful clearing and then there's something on the heels of that. And sometimes it's freedom and sometimes it's another layer that needs cleared. And so that's what occurred for me was another layer. And that particular layer had a lot of prickliness and the prickliness was around grieving, you know, grieving that I uh, don't have the mother I wanted and that she doesn't love me the way that um, I wish she would. And, you know, intellectually getting that that's a bullshit story and then in my heart space just hurting, you know, and so uh, as is my great mother warrior way, I, I went internal and was kind of licking my wounds and waiting for it to pass and meditating and you know and um and it was so beautiful to have uh it was actually the morning of the last radio show and viv reached out to me and uh that morning and said where are you what's happening i can i can feel that you've retreated and what's what's happening is like as soon as i heard her voice i just started weeping and i was like thank you for coming to find me thank you for saving me um and, and it was beautiful and it was a, a, an amazing session for me of um, healing another big piece of that. And what a gift. What a gift to have someone who will come find you when you can't find yourself. Yeah. We actually had just done that the week before because there was that, that feeling in me, again, right, of everything's fine, it's all good, but a little bit of there's some ties that need to be connected and I can't quite make them connect on my own. Mm. And you just started talking and it was so funny because you said, 
um, I was saying everything's good, you know, like it's totally good. Just can you tweak something a little bit over here? <laughs> and you started seeing this past life and I'm sobbing. I mean, it was a minute maybe. <laughs> <I was talking. laughs> like, oh, yes, that. Like, can we clear that? Can we let that one go? Mm-hmm. Good. Yeah, I re- and you know, this is the way that we work with our defense mechanisms, you know, and this is the beautiful thing about, I mean, you hear us do brilliant work here on the air. And then as we get to know each other, and as we get to know our clients deeper, the work becomes faster and deeper and even better, yeah. you know, because I because we know each other. And so um, when, yeah, you know, so as I recall that conversation, Viv was kind of saying, for me, like, yes, I'm totally good. And there's just this one small thing over here. And it's probably nothing. And I was like, oh, except for this. And she was like, what? That? And then it was, and then it ended up being this giant, giant clearing. And Viv, I wonder if you're comfortable talking about, because I, I think, you know, past lives are so curious. It's something we've been working with within magic school this last couple of weeks too. And uh, it never ceases to amaze me how complete and complex those past life stories are and how they affect everything in our current lives. And so I don't, you don't have to share the whole past life piece unless you want to, but I, um, I wonder if you'd be willing to share what that shifted for you in, you know, all of the different areas of your life after that. Oh, it's amazing. You know, it's interesting because we've talked about this so much in magic school. Um, I did not believe in past lives probably until a couple of years ago. And I was raised very, uh, follow the rules, be a good girl, Christian, Baptist for a while, you know, everything according to what is supposed to be the way you think about religion. Um, And so exploring outside of those boundaries has been an edge for sure. And it's sort of evolved the same way you describe it. You know, when you start doing work and things are showing up in the energy and they don't make sense, you try to make sense of them. And so it ends up being from a time that wasn't this, right? Like it's not this lifetime, but it's so real. And the energy is is tangible. I mean, it literally feels like you can put your hands on it, but it isn't from this lifetime. And so that has really um, solidified for me that there is no doubt. There, there is no way you could not have these experiences unless past lives exist. And so there was one that came through last year that has just been a huge learning for me um, that I'm still processing. And so that's the only one I've really explored for myself. And then just this tiny flash once of a Red Cross uniform from another life. And I still didn't quite believe it. You know, I'm like, yeah, I don't know, Red Cross. I mean, that seems so goody two shoes to me, right? Like, of course, a little nurse. I've, I'm sure in some past life, I must have been a good little nurse. And so when he started talking last week, a lot of what was up for me then was um, doing what I thought I was supposed to do. You know, like um, I've been doing this project on the side that I love and have a lot of passion for, but it's made my schedule so full and so busy that I haven't been present the way I'd like to be present. And I'm rushing and trying to keep up with so much more. And so we were looking at the energy and you said, oh, I see this red cross uniform. And I could feel, I could feel literally like the devastation of what that human experience in that lifetime, what my soul experienced in that lifetime, um, of just everybody dying, you know, everybody around me. Um, the images that I was seeing that you were seeing also was, um, they were of me in a battlefield with just people, just bodies everywhere and everyone wounded and dying. and. There wasn't enough medicine. There was not enough time. There were not enough nurses. There was just no way to do what needed to be done to heal all those people. And I could feel the sadness. I mean, literally, I was sobbing as you and I were doing the energy work, but I could also feel in my body just the heaviness of there's no way out. There's no fix for this situation. And um, my current husband, Brad, um, I've had experiences with him in past lives and I felt how real that is. And I could um, feel how he was lost also in this past life. Something happened to him and um, I couldn't save him either. And it was just so many layers of sadness. And so what you guided me through was um, pulling out of that life and just trying to understand what was the lesson, you know, what was I working on in that space and how do I bring that into this lifetime? 
which really to me is the work of past lives. You know, it's not to stay stuck in the story. It's not to relive trauma that a human experienced when they were going through that life. They already lived the trauma. So why redo that? But what's the nugget, the wisdom that can come into this life that can really make something shift? You know, it can release something or free something in you here. And, um, and I was fumbling, <laughs> I was fumbling around and you're like, well, what it feels like is perhaps this. And you just guided me so beautifully into seeing it was about, you know, following the rules and doing what you're supposed to and buying into this belief that you have to sacrifice and, um, you know, follow duty all the time. And that the old way of medicine and healing was the only way. Um, and I know that's not true. You know, what, what we do in this work, what so many healers do in this work is go to the root of the problem. They're not putting Band-Aids on. They're not giving medicine and, you know, numbing people out. They're literally going to the root of it. What caused the pain at the very beginning? And then how do we shift the pain? How do we energetically move that out so you can breathe, you know, so that you can have space for your heart to be happy again and for your heart to feel instead of being so numb. Um, it was it was beautiful. So what I was able to understand from that lifetime, and I know I'm going on here, so stop me if I'm going too long. Well, let me, I want to just add one piece before you talk about the benefits. You know, yeah. the, it, what I notice is the reason that certain past lives present themselves at certain times is because you know, the lesson that was up for that lifetime is presenting itself, you know, and it's, it's not always obvious, but like when medicine woman would come forward with, for me, it was because I was learning lessons about power and freedom and righteousness and, um, victim and, you know, persecutor and all of that. And so she surfaced and that was a big piece of those lessons. And for Viv, you know, who's, who's at this moment stepping more, even more fully into embracing, this life where she's applying this new medicine as her only modality and it has so much freedom and play and joy for her. Of course, this past life is going to surface that says like, bring this nugget with you, bring this up leveling of that knowledge so that you can really stand fully in, you know, this next place. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. And what I would add is with medicine woman, part of it for you was claiming all of the parts of yourself. Mm hmm. Right? Like, mm -hmm. she's weird and wacky. And so you're telling people that you're a medicine woman? Like, what? But that's you. Mm -hmm. That's part of who you are. And so claiming all of that. That's so true. And I'm with Viv. You know, I think I've said this on the show before, too. But I didn't um, come to any of this believing in past lives either. I actually was an energy worker for eight years before uh, I first um, saw something in energy that I couldn't explain another way except for this must be a past life. And it was like, seriously, is this really happening right now? Um, you know, and of course, now that I'm open to it, I see it all the time and I see how impactful it is. So, um, yeah. And I, I happen to know many, many, many of my past lives. So as I open to it, you know, that's actually part of who and what I am is, um, uh, you know, a knower. So I, you know, I probably know 50 of my past lives in great detail. And that informs very much who and what I'm up to in this life. Um, and, and I'm, and I know that there are more, I have one to share after Viv shares them, um, what her, what her breakthrough looked like. I'll share another <laughs> possibility that surfaced for me just recently. Of course, we're talking about past lives, right? Like of that course. is totally what's up for <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, funny stuff. Um, yeah, what would I what would I share about that? Um, the nugget for me was to follow what I'm supposed to do isn't going to make me happy and it isn't going to save the people that I want to save. Mm. Using medicine the way it's traditionally been used, right, is also not going to save because it isn't enough. There aren't enough resources. There isn't enough time. Um, the medicine doesn't do the work. So what I came away from that experience with was absolute confidence in my medicine. So my medicine is going to the root of what's there with love and healing with love, you know, actually solving the problems and making it a permanent solution versus trying to band-aid it. Um, and then also the part about sacrifice um, and duty, you know, I, I'm stepping away from this project, but I absolutely believe and love 
what the project is about, which is saving children and curing, you know, disease in children. But I also know there's another way to do that, right? And the, the other way you can do that is to really create a world where people are so in love and in truth and living their passion that disease doesn't need to exist. And I know that sounds so hippie <laughs> and new age, but I feel the truth of that. You know, if, if people were feeling that way, disease wouldn't have a place in our bodies. Um, it just wouldn't. And so for me, the, the integration of like following my truth and using my medicine, I see that now. And I see that in a much richer way than I did before we had that energy experience. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. I also recall uh, one of the deep lessons of that clearing being that not only about the kind of medicine, but that you are the medicine. <laughs> what? <laughs> Let's just review what? that. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Um, yeah, yeah, and that's that's what I'm working on, right? And that's probably this feeling I have right now of kind of being in the middle of something, right? I'm not. I'm a little undone still because it's mm -hmm. not quite integrated. Yeah. Like, am I the medicine? Yeah, I guess. I mean, mm -hmm. <laughs> probably. <laughs> But can I stand in the truth of that and and really allow every cell in my body to say, yes, I have all that I need and that those around me need. And um, that's a really stepping into my power that is the edge of a shapeshifter, great mother, right? Or mm. great mother shapeshifter. I'm so close on the two. Like that is an edge for me. Can I say I am enough without needing to be buffered up or protected mm -hmm. by other people? Yes. yes. Yes, and yes. Uh, are you saying yes for me? <laughs> I'm simply agreeing with where you are, my love. <laughs> yeah, it's my edge. Yeah, and that's what I wanted to just say about the way that energy works, because I think there's this, of course, there's this idea in, you know, transformation and personal improvement that like, oh, I handled that past life once, you know, and so I'm done. Or I handled that, I had a session on that particular topic, and so you know, I should be through it, but it's like, no, there's, there's an infinite number of layers. So it's like, it got, you know, huge piece of it got cleared and introduced into your system. And now, you know, now you're in between the bars of like, am I really enough? And what does that look like to be, to be the medicine? Don't I have to do something? And, um, you know, and, and I've been in that same space and I, you know, and then I think oh, I'm through that. And then I end up between those same bars again, like, oh, but really now like more letting go really like I, I you mean I don't have to do any kind of launch just being me is going to be enough um so I think that's you know kind of largely what we're all up to as humans but you do Can it I really beautifully mm -hmm. thank you and the other piece is um you know with past lives what we've been exploring in magic school is you you have to be both sides of the coin right mm -hmm. so in that side i was in that life i was the one who was healing the wounded right so there's all this battle and death and i'm the one trying to patch it up and fix it and the past life that has really uh, it just keeps coming up um i mean for the past year so i know there must have been a lot there for me to learn but in that life it felt much older and then this one, which um, feels this century, you know, like the life we were looking at for Red Cross was within the last hundred years. And the one before that feels much older. And in that one, um, I was a healer for a small village and something went wrong. And um, the people who came in destroyed everybody, everybody in the village because of the work I was doing, because of the healing that I was being, right? So I, I was the medicine then and the price tag on that was the devastation of the battle that i saw the other side of in the life we explored last week so both sides mm -hmm. um so for me standing here now you know am i willing to step fully into my space knowing the price it's had before for my soul you know it's it's where the contraction is coming from it's why mm -hmm. There's that piece of me saying, I don't know, because it's hurt others before when I want to take the chance of hurting others again. Yes. Especially those I'm so close to, right, that I love so deeply. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I so, can, yeah, I can I feel the tenderness of that. And it's, uh, I don't, every time you say this, I wonder if you hear the resonance between your medicine woman and my medicine woman. <laughs> no. 
You don't, are you kidding me with that? <laughs> it's the title of medicine woman. I'm like, I, I am really even careful to say that, right? Like I feel I like know. she was a healer in the village. I don't know that she was necessarily creating medicines. I've never had an affinity for that. And there are so many women I know who make, I mean, beautiful, powerful women who make salves and lotions and know how to mix things. And I, I don't even know how to cook well. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. Isn't this funny? She's so stinking cute. So she hangs out with the with a Native American medicine woman in a Midwestern body, and she's part of Wild Soul Medicine Radio, and she has all these past lives as a nurse and a healer. <laughs> she's totally not a medicine woman. <laughs> yeah, so funny. There's so cute. There's something about medicine, too, right? Because even in my core event, it was about mm -hmm. um, me trying to heal with my heart and mm -hmm. being rejected for that. And um yeah, like there totally. is so much. I don't even know if I've told you this. I think I have, but I don't even go to the doctor. I take no medicines because I'm, you know, I've talked about this. I'm allergic mm -hmm. to antibiotics. I can't take anything. I never go to the doctor. I, yeah. I know. And there was, you know, there was <laughs> the metaphor of medicine in your core event as well. So it's it's all around you. And, and actually, the, my medicine woman story was really similar where I was the medicine woman of the tribe. And uh, I was supposed to protect them. And so I said, you can wear these special shirts and they'll protect you. And then everyone got massacred, you know? And so it was exactly that. Like I had the wrong medicine and it was my fault that everyone died. That's what I believed as well, you know, and in that life. And then when I came back to clear it, because of course that was in the way of me stepping into embracing this work was, you know, it's okay with a few people and it definitely appears to have some effect, but you know, I can't be responsible for like a heart, a large tribe again. I can't take on all of those people because it's too much and I'll probably screw it up again. Yeah. And, you know, when I went and healed all of that, you know, what I, what I discovered is, you know, everybody's always just playing a role. So it's not actually, there wasn't actually death. Like I, I went back and talked to all the people who died and they were still holding space for me. They were holding space for me to learn the lesson about power, um, about power and right use of power and, um, and freedom and um, and healing and who's ultimately responsible for what. And, uh, you know, and so so I'm so grateful for every ounce of that experience. Um, and it's funny, I love that you're saying both sides of the coin because that's what I've always said. And, uh, you know, I pride myself because I'm a shadow walker, right? So I'm like, oh, yeah, most people only want to see the lifetimes where they were a victim or where they were the good person, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm very aware of lots of lives where I wasn't the good person, you know, where I was the slave master building the pyramids in Egypt. And um, I've been the dark sorceress who called in the end of everything and um, many, many lifetimes of being the not so stellar um, looking person in the drama. And so I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm totally fine with both sides of the coin. So this is the one that just presented itself as I was working with this mother medicine um, with these brilliant healers who work with uh, angels and, and guides. And and they do this really cool process. So um, they don't ask you anything about what you want to work with. So they had no idea about my mom and what I was working with. But they're giving me all this information about what's happening in my system and and basically, you know, it tells them, it looks like you have an autoimmune disorder because it's like you're fighting yourself and there's this relationship that's like taking all this energy from you that you're totally attached to. And of course, it was my mom. And and then one of them said, you know, I have this feeling like there might be a past life in here where you were the Bible thumper. And I was like, <laughs> what? You know, like I've been all of the shadowy things and I'm totally cool with that. But like, I never want to imagine myself as being my mother or as being a closed minded, you know, whatever religious fanatic. Um, and I also could feel the truth of that because, of course, we've all been everything. So what that actually changed for me is I don't know if there's two sides of the coin. I think there might be an infinite <laughs> number of sides of the coin. <laughs> Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, Lord. I know, right? <laughs> that opens up all kinds of possibilities. You know, mm -hmm. the one I struggle with is when people say, and you've said this, like, maybe I was a man where now I'm a woman. Mm -hmm. I know that really rocks my boat. I'm like, there is no way I would have picked to be a man. Why, yes. why would you do that? Right? <laughs> I know. And people say, why would you be a girl? I'm like, are you kidding? Yeah. Isn't that great? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, the other thing that I think is interesting, even outside of the um, the past life stuff, is 
how to to watch so this work is always evolving right i just you know we just add to it as we read energy and we see stuff and they're like oh yeah that's how things work and we add that as a piece of the puzzle and um so this idea of untaming the soul path of essentially you know looking at here's the gifts and here's the shadow of your work and ultimately we're looking to balance these um deep seated grooves of our soul paths and become more balanced between them. And, and even, um, you know, also sort of like engaging the other paths in a way, like bringing those other archetypes into what, what and who we are. And what's so great about Viv and I, the way that we fit together is um, we both have the great mother as our primary. So there's a sense of joining, like we really get each other in that way. And um, in, I'll just share this because some people were asking this this week in magic school is this idea of how do, like, should you partner with people who are your same soul path or your opposite soul path, you know? And there's pros and cons to both. So when you partner with someone who is the same as you, there's natural affinity because you understand how each other are motivated and work and, um, you know, and so, yeah, so there's that. And then the shadow of that is you get a lot of the same medicine. So for Viv and I, that would look like it's very easy for us to get into the whirlwind of a lot of activity. And we're learning more and more how to stop ourselves or stop each other when it's when we start to head down that path. Um, so yeah, so there's pros and cons. And, and knowing the path is really the pro so that you can see like what's coming and what needs tweaked. But um, the secondary path for us, so Viv is a shapeshifter and I'm a warrior and shapeshifters are very permeable. They're permeable boundaries. They kind of, I like to say they get up under your cracks, you know, so they can with like love. <laughs> with yeah. love, right? With love. That's how they get under the cracks. And uh, warriors, particularly great, well, I mean, warriors in general and then great mother warriors, um, tend to have lots of like boundaries and hold themselves apart and tend to be more concerned with power, right? So um, power, control, um, self-responsibility, all of that. So as Viv and I have played and continue to play over the years, what we're finding is that, um, you know, we're really becoming each other. <laughs> we're, com- we're becoming each other. And so more and more of her healings are about becoming powerful, Right. She's had love down for the whole time. Um, (laughs) And now she's learning about power. Right. This is funny. Okay. So this was what a year ago, a little over a year ago, we were in ceremony together. It was the first time that we'd kind of been in that sort of healing space. Mm -hmm. And I remember you came over, you came over and I was like, I don't quite know if I like you. <laughs> you remember? I said that to you or you said that to me? I said that to you. I'm like, nice. you remind me in certain ways of someone that I'm not in relationship with anymore. Like, you know, it's you're kind of prickly. Mm-hmm. And you're like, yeah, yeah, I am prickly. I'm like, I don't know if I like prickly. <laughs> <So> <laughs> let's sit and talk about this. And we were standing face to face and just playing with energy with each other, right? And so you were saying... Um, can you love me without smothering me? And I was like, sure. So I'd like shoot you all this love. And you're like, oh my God, like back up. What are you doing? (laughs) And then you and I would say, okay, now, you know, show me some power. And it was like, you were cutting me with a sword. Like you had so much strength. (laughs) And we stood, I don't even know. I think one of our friends told us we were there for a half hour, an hour, just standing, playing with the energy of, okay, what is the balance, right? Mm -hmm. What feels good to you and what feels good to me? Mm-hmm. So that we're not killing each other with the opposite thing. Yes. Um, and it has shifted over the last year, you know, definitely. Like the work we were doing with your mom was so heart based. Mm-hmm. You know? And I don't know that you would have been ready for that a year ago. I don't know that I would have been ready to look at duty and sacrifice in my own medicine mm-hmm. a year ago. Yes. Yes, because power is my strong suit and heart is my edge. And so it absolutely, so a year ago, not only would I not have been open for the heart healing, for the last 14 years when I've been doing this work, I haven't been open to this this vulnerable heart edge with my mom. And you wouldn't have been powerful enough to hold me through it. Mm, very right? well said. Yes. Yeah. And so what's beautiful is, um, you know, anymore as we start, like, we're starting to feed each other back. Like, so I did a healing for Viv, you know, in fact, I think it was that Red Cross when I said something to her, I'm like, this is exactly what you said to me a couple of weeks ago. And she's like, I did. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. And then she's like, you're becoming me and I'm becoming you. I'm like, I know. <laughs> 
we're giving each other the in lessons best back. Ways. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in good ways. Yeah, while fully honoring who we are, right? So Viv is always going to be better at getting up under somebody's cracks and she's always going to naturally revert to sunshine and love and, um, you know, and cheerleading. And I'm always going to revert to leadership and holding space and battling demons. You know, that's just what I do. And, and so it's not about becoming somebody completely opposite, but about, you know, just continuing to let go of the stories so that you can be more, more of everything, more, more unity, right? Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what I noticed too is with the work, you know, probably over the last six to nine months, I've seen this so much more. What it feels like for me is holding a mirror up so that the person who I'm supporting can see themselves. Mm -hmm. So I don't want them to see me, Mm -hmm. right? I mean, I am myself. I don't need them to become me. But what I would love is if they have a really stable, safe place where they can look at themselves and not be overwhelmed or be scared or be sad or, you know, just feel Mm -hmm. who they are and then decide what serves and what needs to be changed. And, you know, how do I do that and and still have my feet underneath me? And And what a grace that is, because there's really, there's hardly any place in the world you get to do that because nobody's really equipped to just be with, you know, or to even just hold the mirror. And, you know, even you and I, Viv, when we started, like, there was a fair amount of that tugging, like, if we're going to be in relationship, you have to be less that, or I have to be more this, you know? And then, of course, what we learned is what's always true is the clear space is more essence. So when you're not in reaction to who I am, then that creates all kinds of space and peace and freedom for you. And that's really the only thing you can do. Yes. Well, we had that beautiful example of that. So, um, Last month, I hosted an event here at my house for a few of my friends, and you're one of my friends, right? So mm-hmm. there's this feeling of, well, you've got to be here. And then I could just feel, too, if if you're here for that, then I don't I don't have the possibility of holding space by myself, you mm-hmm. know, with the healer that was there to support, not saying I'm doing it on my own. But it's different um, because naturally when you're with me, a lot of times I want to hand over the power and say, you know, it feels really good to just sit by your side. You do the work. <laughs> <laughs> said with a lot of love for you. You do the work. And I'll just sit here and enjoy how beautiful it feels. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a real edge for me, right? It was an edge, first of all, to say to you, um, maybe it's better if I do this one without you here because I love you. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. that's hard to say to you, right? That was yeah. the first step in power. And, and then the second one was to be able to co-create with the woman who came to guide this beautiful weekend, co-create with her a space that was unique to me. Mm -hmm. It was was heart-based. It was powerful, but it was completely different than how it would have felt if you were holding it. Mm -hmm. Not that either one is right or wrong. They're just different. Mm -hmm. So being able to feel that, um, that was a gift for me, right? Like, Mm -hmm. oh, wow. I didn't realize I could... I could do that. And yes. Yeah. Yes. He's so gracious in not being mad at me because I don't know. I think I probably, I know I would have, I would have been mad if you told me I couldn't come. Mm. <laughs> I would have pouted for sure. And you didn't. You were just like, okay, I understand. And so, yeah, I thank you for that. That was, mm. it was a beautiful learning. Thank you. Thank you. And, you know, to just be super honest, there was um, there was a ripple that went through like, oh, she thinks she can do this herself. And then it's like, of course, I want her to do it herself. Yes. You know, like, yes. And and I say that by way of like, this is our ego. It is the function of our ego. So, you know, I spent so many years in shame of the things my ego would do and say inside my own head and, out, and sometimes outside my own head. Um, and what I'm learning is to not judge that, to just be like, okay, thank you, ego. Your case was made known and my higher self is totally cool with us, you know? Um, And it doesn't have to be a big deal. Well, and I noticed that this week. Remember, I just shared it with you the other day. He said, you know, this, these women that I'm working with are so fast and they're so good. Mm -hmm. Like pretty soon they won't need me. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Then what do I do? And the ego is saying, well, you know, do they need to learn everything? Maybe there are things you should just keep for yourself. Mm-hmm. Well, that's bullshit, right? Like, really? I, 
I did. Just to share everything. I mean, I do that all the time. I, I did it so much at the beginning, my first uh, Evolution U, the first year of school. And like I was elated when people learned to read energy. And then the better they got, I started having those thoughts like, oh, my gosh, what if they become my competition? And then what if they take <laughs> all my guidance? And, you know. <laughs> <laughs> totally, totally. Yeah. And I'm constantly um looking for that in myself because I had a um I had a teacher who um said he wanted that for us and then actually had a lot of markers against it. And and you know, that's natural. It's a totally natural thing. And um so I'm always looking for um any place in me that would have me have someone not become um, fully who they are, right? So I used to hold it as like, that would not have them become better than me. But even that is a marker, right? Mm -hmm. Because there's this like measuring stick. And so it's really, I'm a total stand for people being fully who they are. And that will just look like what it looks like, you know? And then that way there is no competition and there is no even a place for the ego to have a stand in that because I'm not them. So of course they're going to be all of who they are, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, and there's also that interesting switch between student and teacher. So my friend who really brought me into this work, I'll just name her Andrea because, you know, she loves that. Mm -hmm. Um, She brought me into this idea that there's more than just the mental reality. I mean, probably I was 27, I think, when I met her. Um, And she was my mentor. When I was learning to be a parent, she was the one reminding me that actually my child is a soul with her own individual essence. And I shouldn't be the one trying to create a mini Viv, Mm -hmm. you know, like she should be her own little person. I should allow her to be creative. And I mean, what a gift to have someone so wise walking by my side, you know, during such a crazy time as a mom. And um, through my divorce, same thing. Like she was just right there trying to remind me that it's not actually about being in victim. It's, you know, claiming who you are meant to be in this life. And sometimes that creates ripples and it's okay to create ripples, you know, just this beautiful language. And, and then she got stuck. And so just over the last couple of years, you know, she's reached out to me and, and I've been able to mentor her. I mean, what a gift, Mm -hmm. you know, what a gift to have relationships in your life that can so beautifully flow with what is needed at the moment. Mm -hmm. You don't have to stay in the rigid structure of you're the boss and I'm the kid or, you know, Mm -hmm. I have no doubt my daughter is one of my biggest teachers, my son, you know, when Mm -hmm. they get older, I am sure I will be sitting at their feet listening to the wisdom they bring to me. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah, it's a beautiful thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, that actually reminds me of another piece that I wanted to talk about, which is what it looks like to live a life where you're uh, navigating by energy and listening in the deep way that we do. And I feel like we're, you know, still learning. I mean, I, I can't even imagine what we will look like, how we will operate 10 years from now, 15 years from now. Um, because I mean, when we're on a beach somewhere, <laughs> the cabana boys are bringing us drinks while we do energy work. Yeah, I- exactly. <laughs> Using telekinesis to uh, write our papers or I don't know. <laughs> totally. But yeah. it's wild because I don't know if I've talked about this yet on the show, but I think I had mentioned that I had been picked up by an, an online publishing company and I was super excited because they were going to do all of this work and they were, you know, going to be new at new, new age. And it was going to be, you know, more of what I wanted, but just, I didn't have to do it. And, um, you know, it took us as we tried to you play and, theme of that, and I, I didn't have to do it. <laughs> I know someday I'm going to have to, I'm going to get to stop doing stuff. <laughs> I wonder when I'll choose that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so ultimately what happened is, um, you know, as we got into the meat of it, um, you know, what I discovered is really, it, it was more of the same. It's more of the same marketing machine. It's, there's all of this, um, velocity to it and there's not a lot of intention and thought and spaciousness. It's like, here's the formula, do the things, um, go through the motions. And I could just feel the energy leaking out of what I'm actually a stand for and, so we parted. We parted in love, and it was beautiful. And um, still, definitely in relationship with the with the people who who were there. And um, and then it's left this gap, you know, this gap where I thought I was going to be launching a class, you know, that would already have been happening right now. And um, I thought that I was going to be putting on these couple events. And um, you know, so I first went through this period of like, okay, I let go of them, and then will I? Um, who will do all of that work? 
right? So if they're not going to do all the work, who will do the work? And so, you know, Viv and I have just been kind of toying, toying with that and tossing it back and forth. And, you know, um, at times she, she, I would bring her into the story and she'd be like, yeah, that's a lot of work. I don't know. Like, how can we do it? And, you know, and then at times, you know, we, we take turns holding the space and saying like, well, does it need to be a lot of work? And, and what else? And so what we're learning, um, is to honor these pauses and to honor like, yeah, there's something about that event that doesn't feel right. And, Every day I go in and I meditate and then I feel like I'm good. And then I draw a card before I proceed. And it's like, wait some more, wait some more. There's still something you don't see. And uh, it's been very frustrating. You know, it's, it, for me, it's one of those spaces in between the trapezes where, um, you know, it's like, okay, uh, am I going to offer another program this year? And what is it going to look like? And when am I telling people about it? And, um, and so what I just want to say about that is I feel like that is largely what this new paradigm will be about is it will be hallmarked by so much more listening uh, and wisdom and being in the experience of the creation than actually um, any kind of result. Like there will be results, but you know, we're shifting. So right now out in the world, everything is based on result. What did you launch? How many people signed up? How much money did you make? How, you know, what was your return on investment? Blah, blah, blah. And like, I know that world. So it's very compelling to go into an area of my competence. But I couldn't do this without having someone like Viv standing beside me so that when I get freaked out about, you know, are we creating a result where we can just say, but let's look at what's true. Let's look at what's true. Let's look at what's missing. Help me see the thing I cannot see because when my ego gets attached to a result, then it's very hard to see. And it's very hard to let my heart and my, my, is verticality a word? (laughs) My, my up and downness, my connection to source actually show me the way. Yeah. Well, and that's the beautiful thing that we've been playing with too, with clients, you know, as they sign up, it's not, here's the formula that you're supposed to do. It's, you look at what you need, right? Handing mm-hmm. the power back over, like what feels true to you, which some people would say that's crazy. You mean you're not going to sign somebody up and have them do this and that, right? Mm-hmm. No, we're going to have them listen to themselves. And sometimes it's not in alignment. Sometimes it is, but you know that better than I know that, mm-hmm. right? Don't hand yes. me your power. You have your power make your own conscious choice. Such a better way to play. I've just been having these same conversations with a couple of women who will be coming on the show. Liz D'Alto and um, Elaine Khalila Doty are both going to be joining me. And, and we've been in these same conversations. Um, Liz was, was advancing a conversation about this idea of precision in our language around coaching. So when people are selling their coaching programs and they're saying like, you know, when I clear that pattern for you, blah, 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 mm-hmm. you know, or, you know, sign up and what you're going to get is. And, um, and I know the, I know the pull toward that because I've been in sales and I, and I also know the power of this work. And I also know the insidiousness of the ego so that when you start promising people something that they're going to get something. And I, and I say this by way of whether you're a coach offering services or whether you're a consumer signing up for them to be cautious of what in you would motivate you to say yes to a program that promises it could do something for you um, that you could not otherwise do for yourself or that you are somehow lacking, right? So if it's selling you on your lack, then um, it's inherently flawed, right? Because it's inherently not about your wholeness. And no matter what technique they're offering, it would leave a gap. And the gap might be that you leave feeling disempowered to actually do this in a way that's sustainable without the coach, right? Uh, and that's that's also part of this old paradigm stuff that we're navigating through. Um, and it's certainly something we're in the inquiry about, like, well, how do we invite someone into uh, understanding your soul medicine path class if we don't say what it is or why they should be part of it or what they will get from it, you know? And what if they don't already read energy? Then can we really expect them to feel their way here? Um, and so I think that that's really... Um, a lot of what we're up to here behind the scenes is how do we, how do we stay in deep, deep integrity while also keeping the portal doors open for people to come through who want and need and are ready for this level of work. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, you know, to add to that, we talk so much about intention. And one of the things I love in, in the magic school, for example, when you do the getting there meditation and bring everybody into the space, you always say, what is your intention of what you would like to experience in the next hour and a half that we have together? Mm -hmm. So don't hand me your experience and tell me that it was or wasn't good enough. Mm -hmm. Right? What are you setting the intention for? And then what are you going to do to create that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so to me, even someone who doesn't read energy, which I didn't either, right? You still can feel what your intention would be and then measure if you are moving towards that or not moving towards that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And I think, you know, that kind of brings us to a beautiful sum up of um, of our conversation as we near the end here. And it's all points lead back in, yeah. you know, all yeah. points lead back and in. there's nothing outside of you that can fix you or save you or um, or guide you because it really all everything outside of you is just a reflection of what is inside of you. So um, that doesn't mean you have to do it alone. But it does mean you have to sit in the driver's seat of um, where do you want to go and do you need a co-pilot and, you know, it helps you choose wisely as you're co-piloting. And then, you know, constantly referring back to, um, you know, there were certainly times when Viv and I were working out our relationship, um, you know, where she was growing or I was growing at a different pace and then it like we didn't totally fit together. And, you know, and then the ego wants to say like, oh, I chose wrongly and I need to choose somebody who does this or doesn't do this and rah, 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 you know <laughs> I never felt that way what you felt about me what are you talking about <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> and um, it's true it's true on both sides we definitely had to like work through some of it mm -hmm. and it was bumpy I mean yeah both agree like last summer in particular oh my lord I don't think either of us liked each other at all mm -mm. But we no. made it through, right? Somehow we got through to the end of the summer and it's been shifting ever since. Yeah. And I think the thing that sustained us through all of that, and I, w I wouldn't say we didn't like each other at all. I would say we deeply love each other and we knew that. And then for some reason we weren't fitting together and it was like, what is happening here? Um, and who needs to do something to fix it? You know? And it was, <laughs> it was really just a matter of like, we both needed to grow through the layer we were in. Um, and yeah. so we did that. But I think the thing that that solidified us through that process was we both are married to radical self-responsibility. So even when our ego was playing in, she needs to do this or she needs to do that, our higher selves know it's all us. So whatever this creation is, it's mine. Um, and I'm in the driver's seat of shifting it. Definitely. And then also this ability to see at the soul level, right? Like, I am just a human having this one human experience and then I'm going to be, go back. I'm going to be a soul. And so at that level, when you keep that perspective, this is all trivial. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's all little stuff. Um, my soul loves your soul, right? And, and I honor the work you're doing here and you honor the work I'm doing here. And so it's, it's easier to step out of the detail. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just told your soul I love you. I know. My soul received it. <laughs> That's what she does. She comes at you from the side with the love. <laughs> You're better off if you open up to it. <laughs> oh, my goddess. I love it. I could feel when you uh, landed everything, when you said it comes back in. I mean, my whole system just was like, oh, yeah, totally. It comes mm -hmm. in, right? And then you can settle. It does. It does. And, and I love that actually, because Viv and I were talking beforehand about, um, you know, some inner work that's coming up for her. And she was saying, like, I'm really terrified of going in. And I'm like, I was terrified of going in. I, when I went in last week, and I was like, am I going to die if I do this? I've never actually just like not tracked anyone else. Um, and of course, that's the ego, right? That's all ego. So um, what I know is that every time I do go in, and every time every deeper layer that I go in, it just, everything lands. And, um, you know, what I came out of that experience by myself last weekend was like really in love with me, you know, and, and not on, a nothing I could have imagined. It wasn't like a performance of loving myself, which I had tried many times before, but it was like, a, um, I just love me cause it's, it's the thing to do, you know, because I'm, cause I'm awesome. And I, you know, and it's beautiful and why wouldn't I love me? You know, it was like that kind of a feeling. 
<laughs> which is a big deal for a warrior who's, you know, primary gig is fall from grace, unlovable, irredeemable, you know, so. It is huge. Yeah. So I guess mine would be, um, I'm powerful, right? Like mm. that would be the end. Yes. Oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's like staring off into the abyss every single time. You're like, really? Can we do that one later? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And so we just surrogate courage for each other, right? Like, you know, when when I can't look at my thing, she's like, oh, I love you. And I know you can, you know, and I do the same for her. And that's what we do with each other. So we just keep standing here shoulder to shoulder, not buying the bullshit, not buying the hype, not giving in to the temptation to do what we've always done or um, look a certain way or be a certain way or have a certain result, but really just constantly being a stand for essence as queen, you know, Mm -hmm. letting her sit in the throne of who you are right in your center. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, darling. Thank you. Thanks for being brave and sharing your your stories and your vulnerability and love with us. I know that it's medicine for so many. It was fun. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, my love. So that brings us to a close for today. We will be back next week, same time, same place. Until then, be good to yourself. Bye for now. We light a candle, our hearts awake. Illumination for God's sake, a revelation for God's sake, an inspiration for God's sake, illumination for God's sake, for God's sake, for God's sake.